Good morning, everybody. It's gonna be a fun day. Gonna talk about the Boy Scouts. Oh, wait a minute. Good morning, everybody. I, uh, I'm an idiot and I left the window open. Let me turn down the gain a little on this thing. Whoa. So I'm running a little late. It's 11.07, so I'm seven minutes late. Which, uh, you know, sometimes I run on CPT, which is, of course, colored people time. I was taught that by a person of color, so I don't feel too bad about it. Sorry, bad news, Bear. Hello, Coddington Bear. I am going to be uh, talking to someone today at 1130. Um, Shoshana Gabriel, an author, an independent author, and she's going to give me advice about how to uh, do this book situation. But first, let's talk about stuff that's happening. And you can always feed the bear at uh, paypal.me slash feed the bear. Think of it as a tip to a good bartender or uh, a valet, a masseuse. <laughs> Who else gets tipped? I don't like massages, by the way. I don't like being touched by strangers. And I like my stress that I keep in my muscles. It keeps me, uh, keeps me tight, keeps me angry, focused. Who else gets tipped in this world? You tip, you tip like counter help now. Every time I go into Starbucks, I tip. And uh, they usually don't even say thank you, but apparently if you're black, you can use the bathroom and you don't even have to buy anything, but that's a different tale. All right, so let's go through some stuff. Okay, so I made this, this meme because I, uh, someone sent this to me. I get sent all this stuff, and that's why sometimes I go on Instagram benders late at night. Because people just send me these images, and I'm always like, is this real? I've been tricked in the past. So these are all real, what I'm showing you. UN panel says the U.S. owes reparations to African Americans. That's from PBS. So I wrote, only if they pay for all the stolen bikes first. And of course, that's hyperbole. Oh, someone defined it. Oh, and the bare phone is active today. I'm back in, I'm back in bare phone business. I'm not going to be a pussy. I'm not going to be a pussy and say I'm overwhelmed. You guys help support the show. The least I can do is uh, is be a bit of a legend with the bare phone. phone. Okay. The use of humor, irony, exaggeration, or ridicule to expose and criticize people's stupidity or vices, particularly in the context of politics and other topical issues. That's the definition of satire, and that's what I do all the time. Okay? This is classic satire. Now, is that an exaggeration? A hyperbole? Yes. Does it expose how ridiculous what they're saying is? Yes. Okay. If it's true that white people that have never owned slaves uh, have to apologize and pay money to a group of people that have never been slaves, that's th theoretically as ridiculous as saying that black people owe me money for a stolen bike done by a black guy when I was a kid, which was a true story. I never got my bike back and it's time to pay the piper. Okay, is that on the same level? No, but that's what satire is. It's an exaggeration. It's uh, Jonathan Swift was kicked out of Ireland when he wrote a modest proposal about skinning the Irish and using their skin for, uh, for handbags. It's classic satire. I should interview my mom about that. Show dogs. Filmmakers respond to critics who say movie grooms children for sex abuse. The new film Show Dogs, which stars... Ludacris is the voice of a talking police dog. That's kind of ironic, don't you think? A black guy is a police? Ha! <laughs> yeah, right. Who has to infiltrate a prestigious dog show. It's causing concern among parents for a subplot which involves Max becoming com comfortable with strangers touching his genitals. It's, I read up on this. It's pretty insane. They, uh, uh, Will Arnett's character, I believe, teaches them how to go to their happy place when they're Penis and testicles are touched by a strange man. And uh, the film producers were saying, well, this is true to reality. Like, uh, show dogs really do have to have their, their genitals fondled. Uh, what part of kids' movie goes well with uh, reality? Like, in reality right now, the wasabi Arabs, the wasabi Islam, Muslims, chop off the heads of homosexuals. So do we show that to kids because it's real? 
No, you don't show characters. And by the way, th this isn't, I think it's completely intentional. I think it really is pedophile grooming. I think, why would you write that into a movie? That's insane. Anyone who actually is protective whatsoever of children, would that would alarm bell everything. Like, that's just crazy to say that you, you go to your happy place when someone rubs your, your balls and penis. Okay, a strange man. Well, here's the thing. Other people said, well, it's a dog. It's not a person. No, that's called personification, right? Like Bambi's mom. You know how it made people cry when Bambi's mom got shot? It's because it wasn't just a deer. That was someone's mom. Because that's what uh, movies do and stories do. Like Toy Story isn't just toys. Those are personified toys. Just like dogs are personified. And children will watch that and say, oh, I have to go to my happy Zen place when a stranger is fondling my penis and testicles. That's insane. Okay, this made me laugh. Harvard will host its first ever black only graduation ceremony. When you're so woke, you bring back segregation from at funny libertarian two on Instagram, or I don't even know where that was. Someone sent me this, but this checks out. Yeah, segregation's back and they, and they tricked you into thinking that it's, uh, it's progressive. So now there's black graduation and white graduation. That's, it's so funny. You can't even do satire on it. So, um, oh, and let me read some of the Feed the Bears that you guys sent to me through PayPal over the night, over the night time. Dear Owen, can I please be verified as social justice Obama bear? For the days I feel my gender is heteronormative male, and on the days I feel my gender is lesbian queer, can I please be verified as unicorn bear? It's the first time I've ever verified someone with two names simultaneously, but yeah, I mean, if not, I think I can be arrested in Canada. So welcome unicorn bear as well as social justice Obama bear. Hey Owen, how's life? Are you planning on doing any shows in Idaho? Also, if I get married next spring, would you like an invite? Finally... I'd like to be Taco Bear because my gamer tag is always Taco Tanner. Hope this isn't too long a message. Have a nice day. I like you, Taco Tanner. Welcome, Taco Bear. Hey, Big Bear, can I henceforth be known as Currency Bear? Crypto Bear was taken. Yes, and you can find out what names are taken at unbearablesapp.com. I, I popped my head in there this morning. Said hi to everybody as they were chatting away. The app is coming up. It's great. Unbearablesapp.com. Welcome, um, Currency Bear. I got to get into crypto. I, I promise I will at some point. Yeah, what, what did he say? Crypto. Uh, hope you find time to see the crypto summary I sent you at why didn't they laugh at gmail.com. Crypto, bears, honey, salmon. Amy. Uh, thank you, buddy. I got to get into it. Uh, hey, Big Bear, your reading of the chapter about what happened with Amy hit hard. I was, all right, so he sends me a personal message. I don't know if I should read that one. All right, anyway. Just wanted to welcome some new bears in there and uh, keep talking to talk, yo. Good morning. So, and then I'm going to call Shoshana to talk about independent book publishing because she has a fascinating story. I think she reached out to me on either the bear phone or uh, Patreon. I can't remember, but she's uh, got a fascinating story and I'd like to talk to her more about this. Okay, so what is that? Oh, segregation. Here's a, here's a cool little video of... Um, of my beautiful wife after I started manically building this wall. Amy, what are the deer doing right now? Staying on the other side of the wall. Like legit, right? Yeah. I don't know if you can see it from this far away, though. I hear him. Mm-hmm. But they respect the wall. There he is. There's one of those Mexican deer right there. <laughs> Staying on the right side of the wall. Yeah, that's right, Mexican deer. Where is he? Where is he? For those of you that, that can't truly understand what's happening here, I built a wood wall with boulders and wood to keep the damn Mexican deer out of the yard. It goes all the way over there. <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to share my, my accomplishment. Oh, and Bellevue sold out, so no more tickets for Bellevue, Washington, but there's still a good amount for Richland because it's Eastern Washington. And there's not as big of a population. So if you want tickets for Eastern Washington, go to hugepianist.com. And Portland is about to sell out. We've already pushed capacity. So if you want those tickets, hugepianist.com. Hugepianist.com slash specials to see Eric Nimmer's new special or my last two specials. I'm working on my next special. In fact, maybe we'll tape it in one of these shows. Who knows? 
because I do write a lot. And uh, unbearablenewsnetwork.com. Feel free to submit articles, videos. Uh, it's a fun news network. Someone made me this. I thought that was funny. I can play that. Okay, I got to show you this other thing because I just got this today. Hey, Owen, after manually reviewing your video, we've confirmed that it is not suitable for all advertisers. As a, as a result, it will continue with no ads. Titled, Darn Mexicans, 30 weeks pregnant, playing soccer, attacking our flag. I just want to show you how important it is that you guys occasionally super chat or uh, support the show at uh, Patreon or hugepianist.com slash subscribe because everything is censored now. And... It's, it's pretty remarkable to watch, but let me show you the video in question. This is the video in question, and this is longer than the one on, on YouTube, but I just want to show you some cool stuff. So this is my, uh, my family hanging out. And so... Is that Dad's piano? That's my last piano. I burned it. I burned it to the ground. I just thought that was a cute picture. All right, but there's uh, this video coming up. Isn't that, isn't that adorable? I mean, come on. I mean, seriously, not that one. I'll fast forward a little bit. I mean, how cute, all right, here we go. This is what I put up on YouTube, right? Even, even 30 weeks pregnant, it's still juggle. What do you think, bud? It's sick, right? That's it. That's the whole video, that 15 seconds. And they said that I couldn't run ads on it. But yet they have a children's movie that teaches kids to let strangers fondle their penis and balls. Which brings me to my next point, which uh, was brought up on Patreon by Democracy Bear. Democracy Bear. The Soy Scouts. Oh, and this is real. I looked into it. Boy Scout World Jamboree leadership requires condoms, readily and easily accessible for event. Leadership of the Boy Scouts has mandated that the condoms be readily and easily accessible for the next year's 24th World Scout Jamboree, which is scheduled to be held, yada, yada. And there's also designated drinking areas for adults. Uh, yeah, that's, that's horrifying, guys. They let girls into Boy Scouts, and now they're having condoms Readily accessible for young, 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 young children. This is really happening. And if you don't speak out about it, on your deathbed, it's not going to be a fun time. All right. So this, someone sent me this. This was uh, sent to someone on Snapchat. I get these all day. So that's why I like sharing the ones I do. Oh, and I also wanted to give a shout out to someone... He told me about their, their website, Operation O-U-R Rescue.org. Operation Underground Railroad re-exists to rescue children from sex trafficking. Look into that. Join the fight. Um, a, a, a avid watcher, listener of this show, sent me this, that, that there's a bunch of uh, ex-SEALs and Marines and stuff that I haven't looked too far into it, but it looks fucking sweet. Like people actually doing shit. I like when people actually do shit. All right, so this is uh, Everyday Racism in America, a special, uh, a special town hall event, Tuesday, 9 p.m., only on MSNBC. And they wrote, this is helpful, said Democrats everywhere. Yeah, and it's also bullshit. So I want to show you something. And yesterday, I got a little buzzed with my brother, and I was tricked into liking a Democrat for like 10 minutes because I really, really wanted to. I'm so sick of tribal shit taking over life. It's getting so tribal, you know? Oh, shit. Did I? I got to show you guys this picture that kind of sums it all up. But because this guy was showing real heart on some like um, news thing. And I like when people show heart. Like when they talk truth to power and shit, you know, and I was getting fired up. I'm like, that's a Democrat I can like. And then I looked into his policies. And of course, he wants to uh, centralize, centralize everything. Uh, he's a fucking watered down socialist, which is still socialism. And so I, I deleted my post. I never delete posts, except when I just don't want it to be able to, to when, I'm, so when I support something that I, I'm like, you know what? No, I don't like this anymore. 
Because that's not about shame. That's about like, I don't want to spread that I like this shit. Because I was a little, I was a little tipsy. Uh, where is this picture? How did I not? I put it on pa Patreon. Where is it? Here we go. This pretty much sums up <laughs> identity politics. You guys are going to die at this picture. Identity politics 2018. Check this out. <laughs> and then we're going to call Shoshana. Get, gonna get some advice. Look at this. How hysterical is that? You got this, this gay ass white liberal holding a Black Lives Matter sign and this country black dude holding a Confederate flag and they're just staring at each other like, what the hell? <laughs> Looks like your cultures have reversed. So this should be mandatory viewing for everybody in the world. This is Larry Elder before, this is in 2015 when Dave Rubin was still on the left. Watch this and then we'll call Shoshana and, and keep rocking. Thank you. I can see a bunch of uh, PayPal feed the bears and some super chats popping in and I really appreciate it. I'll try to get to all of them. I can't make any guarantees, but I will try. But regardless, it's, uh, it's, it's great that you guys do that. All right, here we go. This is Larry Elder back in... Back when Dave Rubin was still just a normal, blind gay guy. So, but you wouldn't not acknowledge that there are some systemic issues. Give, give me an example. G tell me what you think the most systemic racist issue is. What is it? Well, I would say that because black people in most cases, in many cases, were descendants of slaves, that racism as a as an institution, that it just, a certain amount of it just exists. 2015? I, it, that give, give me the most blatant racist example you can come up with right now. Um, I think you could probably find evidence that, in general, cops are, that, that cops are more willing to shoot if the uh, perpetrator is black What's your data? than white. What's your basis for saying that? Last year... The well, look, I know a lot of people would say, look what's going on in Chicago. I, I, I know what they would say. Yeah. I'm talking about what the facts are. 965 people were shot by cops last, last year and killed. 4% of them were white cops shooting unarmed blacks. In, in Chicago in 2011, 21 people were shot and killed by cops. Uh, in 2015, there were seven. Uh, in Chicago, which is a third black, a third white, and a third Hispanic, 70% of the homicides are black on black. Uh, about 40 per month, almost 500 uh, in the year, per year last year in Chicago, and 75% of them are unsolved. Where is the Black Lives Matter on that? The idea that a racist white cop uh, and shooting unarmed black people is a peril to black people is BS. It's yeah. complete and total BS. And, and the reason for these so-called activists saying this is the assumption that racism remains a major problem in America. The media, CNN, especially MSNBC, runs down whenever a black cop shoots somebody, uh, and, it, and it's a, some, some march on Washington. It's ridiculous. Uh, black people, half the homicides in this country are committed by and against black people. Last year, there were 14,000 homicides, I'm not talking about suicides, I'm talking about homicides. Mm -hmm. um, half of them were black, 96% of them black on black of that set. By the way, you want to know why he specified that? That? He specified that because suicides are listed in gun violence stats all the time by the left, and it's manipulative and really, really gay. All right, keep going, uh, Elder. Where's the Black Black Lives Matter people on that? So that there's where you would say that this is purely because of social justice. This Pure, is purely because, because of, they want ultimately for people to be angry enough to just keep voting. Democrat. That's right. And, and where's where's the evidence of a lack of social justice? When a black uh, suspect is killed by, by a cop, believe me, the media is on it. People are watching it. Uh, and uh, and justice will, will, for the most part, occur. In Baltimore, where Freddie Gray was killed, uh, Freddie Gray died in a van. I shouldn't say was killed. Died in a van. Yeah. You have a city that's 45% uh, black. Uh, city council is 100% Democrat. The majority of city council is black. The top cop at the time was, was black. The number two cop is black. The majority of the command staff is black. The, the mayor is black. Uh, the AG is black. Uh, and yet here we are talking about racism. I mean, it's, it's absurd. Yeah. It's absurd. So it's funny. I find myself caught in between this a little bit as a liberal where I want to always try to defend the other. So in this case, the other being black people, I, I'm always sympathetic to that. And then, yeah, 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 and at the same time, I hear you laying out a pretty solid. Well, I don't get why black people are the other. And that's the, the, the deepest irony of the left is they I don't understand why you would view like them as the other. 
that's the irony of all this. And I'll, I'll, I'll let this finish. But this, look at this. Where is it? Oh, this is over top of it. I can't play it. But that segregation stuff at, at college campuses is real. And it's happening the opposite direction. And it's just, it's the same shit, though. Why are black people the other? I don't get it. All right, let's keep going. Just the facts. I'll tell you something else, too. There was just a study, uh, uh, University of Washington. Uh, and it turns out cops were more reluctant, more hesitant to pull the trigger against a black, black suspect than a white suspect, uh, probably because of the fear of being accused of racially profiling and the fear that the civil rights establishment was going to come down on them. So if anything, uh, whites are more likely to be shot by a cop under, under certain circumstances than a, than, a, uh, than a black person. And in the last 30 or 40 years, the number of percentage of suspects killed by cops who are black has declined 75 percent however the percentage of whites killed by cops has flatlined yeah and so if anything people are more concerned about shooting black people for fear that they're going to be called racist and almost all every one of these incidents whether it's eric gardner in in new york who died because he was selling lucy's and resisted arrest whether it's tamir rice in cleveland who was twirling around the gun whether it's michael brown in ferguson uh who had just uh committed an ar strong arm robbery almost every one of these incidents involves somebody resisting arrest why don't you just do what the police tell you? My dad said, when I get pulled over, have my hand at 10 o'clock, have my hand at 2 o'clock, say yes, sir, say no, sir, make sure my paperwork is in order, and if I feel the cop is uh, mistreating me, get a badge number and deal with it later on. If Jesse Jackson and Al Sharpton and Obama and the whole group of them told black people to do that, we'd have a lot fewer of these things uh, to deal with in the first place. Yeah. All right. So. Um, um... All right. Well, you, you guys just got to watch that for yourself. It's unbelievable. And uh, the reason Obama and all those guys won't tell black people to do that is because they don't want them to be safe. They want to use them to gain more power. Checking in on the bare phone, Scott says, I just coined the phrase to be used as a compliment uh, for wise men. He's a good man to learn life from. He also said, Big Bear, the cripple called me a uh, obese pedophile who eats his victims. He has no good comebacks. That's hilarious. Uh, bare phone, someone just activated uh, what's up, yo? Not sure why you're calling Winter Solstice is dark, my good bear. That was excellent. That touching story is a side of you most will never see. Can't wait for the book. Two thoughts. SJWs are, and then we are using, we're, you know, then we get a little heated here. I'll save that. Uh, I'll save the colorful language, but I do appreciate that. Oh, and this is something else about the Winter Solstice episode. So Winter Solstice is on uh, December 21st. It's the darkest day of the year. And then I realized Amy's birthday is, is December 22nd, the first day coming out of darkness. This is from Thumpy Bear. Hey, Big Bear, I emailed you an article about Sandra Bullock using discarded baby penis foreskin for her facials. She calls it a pe penis facial. They discuss it on Ellen. No censorship there. They joke about it. It's dark. It seems truth is stranger than Unbearable News Network. Whoa. Sandra Bullock, uh, Bullock uses discarded baby penises to make her face look less old. This is Jeremy just... Uh, just bare phoned in. Hey, bud, missed your live stream yesterday, and I'm just tuning in. I hope your family's doing well. We love you guys. Oh, yeah, we're great. I, I just like sharing dark moments with people uh, because it, it makes them, you know, it allows them to feel less alone and that getting through things is part of life. It really is. Other people, I think a lot of people don't know what, what others go through in life, and that's one reason why they feel so alone and uh, depressed and anxious is because they think that they're the only one that has certain feelings or has certain angers or has certain um, experiences happening. I'm about, I'm gonna call uh, Shoshana soon. All right, love that razzmatazz bit. This is from uh, White Bear. I thought I would start working on some stand-up sets and try my chops at some live comedy. I started listening to the early Why Didn't They Laugh to see what chops I should work on. Do you recall any particular episodes that stand out with extra good advice I should watch out for? The first episode is rough. It's uh. It's got bad audio. There's a ding, ding bell that's a little corny and stupid. But it's called Caesar Salad. It's the first Why Didn't They Laugh I ever did. And it shows the engineering and the intense breakdown that people have to do to make a joke work. I was working on one joke. You know, Julius Caesar took over the whole world. What did he get? A salad. You know, about legacy, right? And, and all the things that I went through to get the punchline right. Oh, this community bear. What's Community Bear send me? Family isn't always about the people in your life who are blood relations. It's about the people in your life who want to be in there. Um, it's about the people in your life who want you to be in theirs. 
It's about the people in your life who accept you for who you are, support you in the things you choose to do, and no matter what, are there for you. It's the people in your life who love you, respect you, and who you can depend on. Now that's family. I like that. I like that. The bears are family. Uh, this is from Ed. Love the video of you and your family in the yard. That's what life's all about. Hell yeah. Oh, hey, bud. Sorry you're getting trolled in the phone. Some people are just assholes. Block the numbers to bother you and don't let it get to you. Cheers. Oh, yeah. You guys write me stuff like that. Pep me up. Because it really is dumb. Like, I'm not some pussy that's like, oh, people are saying mean things to me. It's just trolls. And it's not that I get sad or hurt or I'm no victim or anything. What it is is it, it, it keeps me out of my uh, creativity place or my like warm place where I, I can create stuff. It keeps me in battle mode. And battle mode is cool in certain times, but it's not enjoyable to be in battle mode all the time. So you're right. I just block numbers and uh, that's it. And bare phone isn't that crazy. Where I'm not letting more bare phones in, maybe a few, but... It was the people who did the 20 bucks a month. Um, and and some people have, have X'd out their monthly subscription. I even told people that that was possible, that you could always do that, that I'm cool with that. But the people early on that when I was, when I'm, when I was getting hit financially hard, uh, huge pianist.com slash subscribe, those people are always going to be bare phone. And they'll always have a special place in my heart because you didn't need to. I like when people do stuff that isn't necessary. That's how you fight socialism. The only way to fight socialism is, is do things without a gun to your head. And that way it doesn't open up people who then will put a gun to your head. Oh, this is from Magster Bear. Worry is a form of preparation. Courage is a form of execution. Heard that in an interview, but can't remember who said it. Yeah, depression comes from regret. And uh, um, depression is the past and anxiety is the future. Think about it like that. Like anxiety is thinking of what could happen. Depression is thinking about what has happened. All right. I'm going to uh, read a couple of these super chats and then I will, um, I will call Shoshana. Shout out to Unbearable's app developers. Feed the developers some honey. PayPal.me slash Unbearable Devs, D-E-V-S. Yeah, if you feel like throwing some honey in their pot, go for it. They did a great job and they did not need to do that. But it's really fun to write to people on there. Unbearable'sapp.com. Um, anthropomorphism. That's from Bunny Bear. That's what that means, I guess. Coop's channel. Thank you, buddy. And then uh, we got a we got a bunch over here at the at the PayPal section. I'll just read two, and then I'll call Shoshana. Keep up the great work. I really appreciate your perspective, insight, and humor. You're on point regarding homeschool, home education, uh, cause school is just brainwashing. And I loved your show on John T. G.'s book. He's talking about John Terragato, dude's a legend. Uh, what do we got here? James Moriarty. Oh, this one's long. I'll read it at five time, James. Love you, buddy. Jesse, the excerpt you read from your book yesterday hit me hard. I don't te uh, tear up easily, but damn. I've, uh, yeah, this might be personal, so I won't read that out loud. Because uh, that was a personal uh, topic, so I'm not just going to... Even though I know you guys know that I read these, I, I, I try to make discretionary calls. This is from Liam. There are plenty of guys that you need to watch in the fitness industry that speak the same message as you, Crowder, and Peterson. The Hodge, Hodge twins are one, but a guy who you need to watch is Elliot Hulse. He's a jacked, more spiritual person version of Peterson, but speaks the same message of being the strongest version of yourself as videos from 12 to 15, as well as videos from this year are like that you need to watch. Guys like Molyneux and Callan have invited him on their podcast and you should as well. He needs to be heard. He's one of the good guys. I'll definitely check him out. That's Elliot Hulse, H-U-L-S-E. Sweet. And I was just texting with Gavin McGinnis about Australia. That's going to be fun. Australia. Oh, Pinder. I just got to read this one real quick. Big Bear, this 1911 Bear. I thought that Triple Troll suffered from too many concussions while competing in the Special Olympic Hurdles event. He obviously thought his victim status made him off limits. Any backlash? Not. I, 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 that cripple stuff made me laugh wicked hard. All right, so let me see if Shoshana is here. And I'm going to just have her tell um, you stuff about herself. All right, let me, let me switch to Skype interview. Boom. Hopefully this works. Hi. Hello. I can't hear you. 
This happened with Dave Smith, too. Can you guys hear me? Can you hear me? I can't, I can't hear you. I'll try again. Let me try again. Let me try again. Do, 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 do. Hang on. Let me make sure I'm good. Usually that does a ringing. I got an idea. What if I and uh, quit my Skype and then start it again? That happens sometimes. Oh, my buddy's in Finland right now and says it's amazing. He's like, bro, all we do is make vodka. He's like, all we do is make vodka in the woods and, uh, and, and go to steam rooms and steam and sauna. He's like, it's all sauna and vodka. He's like, dude, Finland is awesome. You got to go to Finland. So I really want to go to Finland is the bottom line here. Maybe it's on my end because usually that does a ringing sound. Does that work? You, you can't hear me or you can? You can hear me? Huh. I can't hear you at all. Let me see. Okay, mute. Now the mute's fine. Uh, I'm going to go into the chat and see if anyone has any ideas. I'll be back. That's all right. This is what we do. We tackle things together as a group. All right. Let me go into the live chat here. Does anyone know what could possibly be the problem? This is going real fast. Unplug your headphones. I don't have headphones in. Let me see if, uh, if my speakers are working. Yeah. I, I'm yeah. Here. My speakers are fine. She may need, all right. Unplug her earphones, the mic and headphones. Oh, and Skype with a phone call for audio. Headphones plus mic is two mics. It's her headphones. Ah, all right. Let's try that again. Let us try that again. This is going to be fun. I like this. I'm going to do a whole week where I just call bears. All right, we have some ideas. Did you take out your headphones? Nothing. <laughs> All right, let me go into the chat area and see if anyone has any ideas. Okay. Uh, frozen. Stuck. She has two mics. She's not frozen here. Frozen, frozen. Frozen in the patriarchy? That could be it. <laughs> <laughs> she may need to change her input device in Skype or her system preference. Mic input says, says unbearable news network. If you, if you text me her number, I can troubleshoot with her over the phone. Well, I know what I could do is call her on my phone and just hit speaker to get audio. I don't know if that's possible. We're going to make this work. Life is getting through problems. All right. Voice call. Speaker. Hi, Owen. Does that work? Hang on, let me put my headphones on. Is this working, guys? Can hear you. Here, talk to me. Hi, I can hear you now. It's gonna be a little. I think it's gonna. Nah, this is gonna piss. I think people are gonna get pissed. Hang on. Yeah, there's all this echoey stuff. Ah man, I'm really looking forward to this too. Skype is not working. No. All right. I don't know. Uh, I'm going to try one more time. I'm going to try one more time. Actually, let me try my, uh, my preferences. Calls. Well, I, I, I do Skype hours every morning with Crowder. Like literally hours. So I know that mine works. All right. Speakers. Oh, hang on. Hang on. Speakers. Built-in output, ringing, built-in output, in Yeti. 
Okay, let me try this. There we go. I think we might have it. It was. I think it was me. I, th I think it was me. You think it was you? I do. I think that I had to switch something. But I'm glad that we made it through. We made it through the wilderness here. You can hear me. I 100%. Queer as day. <laughs> okay, wonderful. <laughs> I love it. How are you? I wonder, should I, um, now that you can hear me, I'm not going to bother plugging in my microphone or my... You're good. My headphones. Yeah. Just be regular. I like the guitars on the wall. That's cool. Oh, thanks. They're my husband's. And you got a bow. You got a bow and two guitars. That's so cool. Yeah, he um, he hunts with the bow. So. Yeah, you hunt, and then you play a song about what you killed. That's right. So uh, tell the peeps what your background is with uh, writing, and I like your story. I like what happened in your career. It's uh, somewhat similar to my career. Yeah. Um, so I, I used to write as Shoshana Evers, um, I started, my first book was published in 2010 and, uh, I wrote from 2010 to 2015 as Shoshana Evers. And during that time I had like six books with, um, Simon and Schuster pocket Whoa. writing romances, erotic romances. And, um, I'm Jewish. So that was <laughs> another thing I should say. Right, right, right. But basically at some point in there, I, um, I ended up, uh, deciding to follow Jesus. And after like getting baptized and stuff, I started thinking, this is really weird to like write these really sexy romances and also be like, you know, praise Jesus. And I don't know, I felt weird about it. And the more I felt weird about it, I ended up writing this blog post and I basically, I pressed publish um, with that and torpedoed my career. Right. Um, but are you? So, but you, you seem happy though. Every time we've chatted, you seem like a, you're in a good place. I'm super happy. I um, what, you know, I told everyone like, you know, <laughs> thank you for being my readers, and I'm really sorry, but you know, I I just can't do it anymore. I can't write, you know, the the sex scenes. I can't write this type of book, and I really want to write books with a faith element. Um, you know, I want to be able to talk about God in my books, and um. Yeah. So <laughs> what's what's a, what's like a what's a Jewish erotic novel like? It was like he he got the bagel for slightly cheaper than was listed. Yeah. No, I pretty much avoided having Jewish characters completely because <laughs> I was like, I don't want to perpetuate any stereotypes. Like one time, my publisher was like, I want you to write a Christmas novella, and then she goes, Oh, or Hanukkah, write a Hanukkah novella. I'm like, No, thanks. I'll write a Christmas novella. <laughs> Yeah, it was like uh, like the the Neil Diamond. It's like what Neil Diamond did. He was Jewish. He wrote all Christmas songs. Yeah. He's like they're just more fun to write. Come on. So yeah. all right. So you you reached out to me about the uh, when I was talking about my book and having to publish it independently. What what advice do you have? Like how can I publish it myself without any input from the outside forces? Oh, you you are not only going to be able to publish it yourself. You're going to be able to have all the control and do it just as well, if not better, on your own and make a lot more money. Interesting. That's, that's just a fact because, it, it, you know, it boils down to math. Um, when you have a publisher, I don't know what your contract was like, but you were probably going to get around 25% um, royalty for your um, e-books and maybe 7% on paperbacks. I don't know if they were going to do a hardcover. Um, whereas with, um, if you put your book on Amazon and you price it between $2.99 and $9.99, you get 70%. Whoa. So if you publish it at $9.99, you're going to get about $7 per ebook. Wow, that's cool. Yeah. And, and you can also publish it in print with print on demand, which means you don't have to have a garage full of books like in the olden days of self-publishing. You don't have to ship them out yourself. Print on demand. Okay. So is that like a company or is that like a... Uh, specifically, I rec there's two companies I recommend. I don't have any affiliation. Um, one is uh, Create Space. That's one word. And the uh, that's owned by Amazon. Okay. And then the other is Ingram Spark. And what a lot of people do... Actually, I do kind of have an affiliation to Ingram Spark because... Um, I have a book cover company. I don't make book covers, but um, I, this cover company that I, I have, we have hundreds of artists and they make lots of covers. 
for indie authors. And um, we actually have like a coupon code to give people free setup on Ingram Spark. It's um, selfpubbookcovers.com in case anyone out there is interested. Oh, sweet. Yeah. And where can people find your books too? Like uh, your, but both in the past um, and now. Okay. So if you go to, um, you know, just Amazon um, and look up Shoshana Gabriel, those are my books now. If you um, look up Shoshana Evers, you're going to find me there. I also have, you know, paperbacks and they're kind of available just anywhere you're going to find paperbacks online. There might be a few indie stores that have them. But. How can I become best friends with your husband? Uh, because he play, he, he has just, I just can't get over the two guitars in the, in the bow. Like, that's so cool. He's just yeah, like, bam! Awesome. <laughs> and he likes to, we live in North Idaho, so um, nice. it's really beautiful out here. And uh, he likes to practice with the bow in the backyard and stuff. And then he goes hunting with it. You can, you know, when you move to Washington, we're, we're neighbors. Yeah, right I, I, I'm, I'm going to so go hunting. Go elk hunting with him next Did, season or something. I just like shooting uh targets with a bow i don't have the confidence yet to to hunt with a bow i just think that i'd i'd miss all the vitals and then just like track it for just the rest of my life because yeah i'd like just a hurt foot i'll let you in on a secret about bow hunting yeah it's mainly bow hiking yeah you're doing a lot of hiking and tracking the the elk or the whatever you're you're looking for and um calling doing the little calls to to make it think you want to mate with it right like and, a horny um, out the horny out call yes exactly it's kind of like your old it's like I your old books time. it's like the old books it's like if we're if you're trying to like like hunt human beings you just start reading uh shoshana evans's books and then <laughs> people would just be horny and they come out right. and then dun, 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 dun. right what? i just play the audio book on a speaker above my head <laughs> that's hilarious then, yeah, what, why is the market for female erotica so, it's it's so printed word. I, I found that interesting. I was trying to read this book about it. I think it was called A Billion Wicked Thoughts or something about the psychology of of uh, the printed word versus men seem to be more oh, visual yeah. with pictures and women seem to be more into words. And I, I, I just find that That's fascinating. Exactly That's exactly it. Women would rather... Um, would rather visualize in our own head, like imagine, you know, like, you know, if I'm reading a, a book, I might want to imagine my own husband's face. Right, right, of right. Seeing a picture of somebody else. Women are more emotional and relationship oriented, I think. In general, in general, of course, there's always exceptions, you know, hashtag not all men, but um, <laughs> men seem to be more visual. Well, it's also, yeah, because it's also, um, I w- I think like men are more, they have simpler relationships. It doesn't mean we're simpler people or we don't have emotions. I think it's more about uh, linear versus nonlinear thought where men are just more task oriented. So like if we were reading an erotic novel, it'd be like the dude had a wiener and she was into the wiener. It would just be so direct and it wouldn't be sexy to us at all. It would just be like, I don't know. I can't imagine reading erotica as a male. Like that just doesn't. My husband, when he really didn't read my books as Shoshana Evers, I mean, I had over 20 and he maybe read a couple (laughs) and he, he told me, he's like, I just skimmed through the sex scenes and I'm, and he's like, and I'm like, well, that's why the books don't make sense. You know, because you're writing an erotic romance, you know, the sex scenes are part of the story. It moves the relationship forward. If you skip them, you're missing out on the relationship growing. That's so and fascinating. That makes no sense. Yeah, and Whereas, also it's yeah. like also how women would describe a sex scene versus men is so different too. Like women would describe like like uh, like the feelings of it or the neck right. or something. You know, oh, sure. like dudes would be like his wiener was huge and great. <laughs> like it's so fascinating how the di- how different people view. The same thing but that's cool though that you gave up prestige to follow your heart i find that really admirable i appreciate that yeah i um i just i really felt called by god i wanted to write i'm writing now as shoshana gabriel 
like I said, and I'm not making nearly as much money. I am not doing as well. I mean, who knows? It's God's plan. So who knows what will happen in the future? But um, I definitely like the cognitive dissonance is gone. Yeah, I which is feel there's, better about there's it. no amount of money that can replace that. Right. Like the cognitive dissonance is, is the worst is when you realize that it, the, the like what you're doing is intentionally mis, um, uh, what's the right word for that? Uh, when you're just almost like using people, when you're like, when you're doing an equation that you just know someone will buy. No, like, like your old books, like there, there's a, there's a cycle with art sometimes that'll happen where in the beginning you have passion in it and you're like, oh, this is great. And then you start seeing like that it's an equation and it's almost like you're manipulating people with ways that you know they'll react to. And then you start feeling that, that hollowness of like, am, is what I'm doing good or bad? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's that definitely came into play because I, I, I started writing books that had less and less sex in them. And when I first started, it was just like, that was all it was. I, right. I had like uh, eight or not eight books published with this um, company called the Laura publisher called the Laura's cave. They are now defunct, but they used to be like the biggest, um, erotic publisher. Um, and, um, I, that was, I was so into it. I was so excited about it. And, you know, I got to a point long after I'd stopped writing with them, but I was still writing like, you know, the sexy books. I just, I actually, I actually published a short story for an anthology and I did not realize, I did not realize it was self-published and did have an editor. Um, I didn't realize until after it was published and I read a review that I had forgotten to put the sex in. <laughs> it's almost like you started not being into it. Almost like a bad relationship where you start like, you're like, uh, you're writing a whole story plot and then you're like, and then they had sex and they went to sleep. And the next day. <laughs> yeah. That was, that's exactly what was happening. You know, it's like I would sit down to write and then I literally, I, I read the review and it was like, when the couple finally gets together, they don't actually have sex. And I really was surprised because Shoshana Evers books always have sex. And I was like, they don't have sex. I was sure. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot to, I forgot to put sex in there. Yeah. And so what's your opinion on, uh, on 50 shades and on twilight and stuff like that? Um, well, so they seem very different. Just real quick, I, I think that like Fifty Shades and Twilight c couldn't be more obvious. Like one's about the la like the, the 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 tension of non-sex for book after book, and then Fifty Shades is just so gratuitous. I I, I just would like to hear your take on it. Okay, so I'm I'm a little bit biased, I guess. But you know, publishing is a small world, and yeah. within the different niches, it's even smaller. So the romance writers community is very small. Erotic romance is even smaller. Christian romance even smaller um so you know i'm lucky that i had a chance to to meet and talk with um with erica with el james and uh you know i was i roomed at conferences with like some of her like good friends and things like that so i had a different perspective because from seeing the person yeah but i i had read it um and i loved it the writing style wasn't for me but the story, I love. I just loved it because it's pure fantasy. A lot of people are like, "Oh, like it's an abusive man and this and that," and I totally can see that. But you know, it is fiction. It's not like she's getting abused in real life. Yeah, that, I that, mean, that's that was... kind of my way of looking at it. I would not recommend it if for um, if you're looking for a clean read. <laughs> yeah, it's not. Um, but well... she's a great storyteller, and that's why it became such a huge hit. Now, I don't want to say like, well, I was doing this before that, but because obviously my skills are not hers or I would have been that. I, who knows what would have happened, but you never know if it's skills, though, or if it's timing or you never know the factors. It doesn't something happen. Some magic happened there that was wonderful for her. Um, I wrote uh, BDSM erotic romance um, in 2010, 20, all through 2010, 2011. So by the time Fifty Shades of Grey came out, I was very well positioned in the market in the sense that when people read her book and then they started looking for other BDSM erotic romance, like kinky erotic romance, yeah, yeah, yeah. And there were my books already oh, written. Oh, that's cool. Right 
And so that was wonderful because a rising tide lifts all boats. For sure, sort of for sure. Yeah, and, it's, and if you had owned more uh, of a percentage back then, you probably would have made even more when that popped, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, uh, who knows? Yeah, but who it doesn't knows? matter. And it also, matter, um, yeah. yeah, and I th I'm like a, 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 a free speech absolutist, so I think people should be able to write anything they want. My, my issue is always just, too. is when someone, it, it's the hypocrisy of someone who like likes and reads that book and has no problem with that and then tells me what jokes I can't say that's what that's what makes me start hammering that book where I'm like oh you want to start analyzing because yeah I see what that book is the book is the ultimate contradictory man that can't possibly exist based based on you know women's needs like like that song I do how to love a woman you know you have this this billionaire sex freak who just wants to be with one woman. You know, it's just like this contradicting thing. I like to think that can exist. Well, I, you can I be a billionaire know. and a good guy and want to be with one woman, but it's the, but it's the dungeon. Christian Grey. He's not a good guy. Right. He's not. And the, and the, and the, 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 the real fast to violent uh, relationship, I think, I don't know. If, I don't think that man could possibly exist for someone's like, just w wants to settle down with one girl and has like a red room, you know? I, it just. I I, I, t I kind of think it can just because he's he's broken. I don't know if you read the book, but this I guy haven't. Is I haven't broken. read the book. He's so broken. He's somebody that no woman, in my my opinion, no woman that was mentally like healthy and looking for a healthy relationship would be with. Yeah. Whereas the heroine is also completely new to everything and has no idea what a healthy relationship is. And so she goes into basically like a very power dynamic, unhealthy stalkerish relationship and doesn't know. Anyway, I don't know. We're probably boring the bears. No, not know. at all. This is <laughs> fascinating stuff. I like, I, I think the psychology of, because this is the thing is when something becomes that culturally relevant, uh, I think it's interesting because it, it, it started out selling Harry Potter and you start being like, well, why? And same with Harry Potter. It's, 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 it's the Bible in a lot of ways, just taken and twisted and all that. It's the same story that we just naturally are drawn to. And, right. um, but like uh, Fifty Shades, I think it, it made a lot of dudes be like, what the, what is this? You know what I'm saying? Cause it's like, that guy just seems like such a dick. He is, but you know, one of those things <laughs> is like, you talk about soy boys. Yeah. And I don't think women really like that. Maybe some do, but I think in general, the women who are saying, you know, I want a pushover and who will, a guy who will do everything I say and never yeah, really yeah. stand up for himself. Yeah, those guys suck. women really like that. No. I think women want a real man. And then you look at a, a, a book that's fantasy, you know, erotic fantasy, and you just kind of, it's, it's. I have so many thoughts on it. But no, I, I love it. That's what this is all about. I love <laughs> chatting. Yeah, this, this is fun. Yeah, tell me more about this because this is the because my main comedy is actually male female stuff. I get yeah. into the politics a little bit here and there based on the fact that um, the left wing social justice warriors try to ruin comedy. So defensively, I, I attack them back. But my main uh, my biggest jokes and my main jokes are always about male female interaction. So I find this stuff fascinating. I think that women, I mean, that's one of the reasons why I wrote, and even now writing is Shoshana Gabriel, even now I write, um, the man is always kind of like a very strong male force. Like yeah. there's nothing that's wimpy or weak, you know, or, um, about him because I don't, I think that anytime you have a hero in a romance novel or in life, you have like, you want to have a guy who will, you know, sweep you off your feet and maybe not in real life. Maybe in real life you want, you know, more of an egalitarian relationship and you want, um, you know, him to wash the dishes and cook for you and whatever it is in real life. Um, but a book is an escape from real life. A book right. is a way to just, you know, immerse yourself in, um, another world where a man can be the way you would fantasize a man would be 
and it doesn't you don't have to deal with the consequences because the consequence of living with somebody like Christian Grey, right. Shades of Grey, like the consequence of living with somebody like that is like being uh, you know stalked and being obsessed over and having right. bruises and like all sorts of crazy things whereas you can read the book and then go back to like your nice normal life yeah like i know a bunch of oh wait a minute i think my my thing froze Hang on. Oh, yeah, oh, no, it froze. like i know um i know a lot of people that are workaholics and uh they seem drawn to long distance relationships because it, it's kind of like what you're saying where it's like it's all the it's it's they can have a relationship and not face the reality of not seeing someone and putting work ahead of a person and that's kind of like what you're talking about is is i think what 50 shades revealed about society was men are becoming too weak and i think that that's true and i think that women started um uh romanticizing this i called it 50 counts of rape like that was one of my jokes <laughs> But uh, start uh, they, they they start they start getting drawn to this like caricature of masculinity, you know, like just this this obsessive, wealthy, powerful, you know, um, alpha male that that is so over the top. But when you think about the context of society right now, where you have men wearing women's pants and being like, "How dare you?" and wearing pussy hats and stuff, and and you know, I really feel for women in a lot of ways because I think of women are being robbed of having that that gendered relationship of a of a man with with uh, guitars and and bows on the wall, and uh, and a woman who loves it. You know, because that's what me and Amy have, and it's awesome. And then I see a lot of these like Aziz Ansari and his girlfriend wearing the same clothing with her having the dominant grip in these I saw photos. That photo, yeah. Yeah, on and your stream, I was watching. Yeah, and it makes me think, like, that's why women are drawn to these, like, caricature men that in real life, it wouldn't last more, like, after a month, she'd be, like, calling her mom, like, he, he put me in the room again and beat me, you know? And, yeah. But I get that. Well, so anyway, any final advice for me for, for writing? And then I'll, uh, I'll let you go. And I'll, because I, 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 we talked a lot longer than I thought. You're a very interesting person. You're always welcome back on. Oh, thank you. You know, there's so much to talk about with, I thought we were going to do a lot more talking about like that, the nuts and bolts of, um, you know, publishing on Amazon and on iBooks. Um, if you want to do that another time, what about, kind of what about audible? That. What about audible? Cause see, that's that my, yes. I, I consume most books auditory. So I, yeah, you, I've, I've got a lot of books, um, as ever's on audible. And, um, what you can do is there's a, uh, it's called ACX. ACX, the initials, um, is how you go through Audible and you can be a creator and create the audiobook. You can't do it until your your ebook is final because you want them to do something called Whisper Sync, where the you can listen to the audiobook and then pick up in your ebook where you left off and go back and forth between them. Yeah. Um, so the wording has to be pretty much exactly the same. Um, but you can, you know, produce it yourself and, um, and do that. I had, I hired professional narrators to do mine. Um, uh, it'd, it'd be kind of funny if my book is read by like a British woman. <laughs> 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 no, I'm definitely going to read it myself, but I was just thinking about like the funny voice, like if, if someone's voice, like if someone's book, like if Arnold Schwarzenegger's book was read by like, like a petite, like Southern woman, it would be, it's like. Yeah, so I, I'm from Austria, and I was like, wanted to be Mr. World. I just, for some reason, I find that juxtaposition hilarious. It, you know, most most people who have like who are known for their personality, like comedians, actors, actresses, they tend to read their own books because people are expecting their voice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and I would. Peterson, I I listened to his audio book, um, and he did it himself. But um. Yeah, no, I'm all about reading it myself, and I have two more questions for you. One. How can you can I do a pre-sale thing so that I get on the a chart? Okay, so yes, there are on Amazon you can do 90 days pre-order. Um and the thing so one but it's very final. So your book has is gets released in 90 days whether yeah. you have it ready or not. Um so you have to make sure that you know that the book is done or will be done within that 90-day period. Um there's pros and cons. So on iBooks, you can have a pre-order. And when people buy it on pre-order, the sales don't count in the ranking until the day it releases. This is on iBooks, um, like iTunes, but the books part. Um, 
all the sales come down on one day. So if you get a thousand pre-orders, they all come on day one day, and it shoots your book up in the ranks. That's what I'm talking about. Amazon, they, your pre-orders change your ranking, which your your sales ranking changes every hour, right? So every hour it gets updated um, depending on who's buying your book or who's buying other books that are around it. So there's millions of books in the Amazon store. So then every book that has had books copies of it purchased has a ranking and it may say your number 100,000 out of, you know, however many million that there are. Yeah. Or it may say that you're number 10 out of all of these. Um, so about the pre-orders is your, your ranking changes. It can get onto the top 100 list theoretically, even as a pre-order before it's available. Wow. That's cool. Um, so that's one of the good things about it. The bad thing is, is all of your best fans are going to pre-order it, which is great, but that means that you have to have, you know, at least a good chunk of people that you can count on on release day. And that's on buy. Amazon. So that, uh, so on Amazon, do it on release day. What's the one you, you said before? The eBooks? Is it the eBooks <laughs> that shoot it up? It, yeah, you know what? I got to tell you, when it comes to print books, like your, your sales, everyone's sales are like, mostly ebook mostly ebook the right. paperback sales make up for a, a much smaller amount because everybody want reads on their phone or on their kindle or wherever um and the money that you make off of an ebook is so much more like off of a paperback if you want to price it reasonably you know under twenty dollars you're only going to make a few dollars per print book I just want to get on the chart so I can take a, a picture of it and send it to my old publisher, and it just says, go fuck yourself. That's <laughs> my goal. I don't think you need that last part, because just <laughs> the chart itself will be that. Yeah, I, that, that, that's my main thing. It's not an ego thing. It, well, maybe. Is revenge part of ego? I don't know. But uh, I, just, <laughs> I just want that. I just want to crack that list so that I can uh, prove that the you can go independent you don't need to follow the rules of the big publishers because they're they're censoring so many stories now that it's becoming infuriating yeah. well there's also um there's also categories on amazon so for example you might end up um if you if you put the metadata into the ebook properly and you have your categories or subcategories set up right can i share my screen real quick of course. Just to show you what i mean um Okay, how do I do that? More share screen. This one. Okay. Can you you see my, my desktop? Yeah, here we go. Amazon? Yeah. Okay. So this is Amazon. This is me, Shoshana Gabriel. Now, what I wanted to look up was, um, uh, I'll show you Trevor Noah because he has a, um, so he's a bestseller. This is, that's a, a ad. You can do Amazon ads. This is just the regular one. He has a lot of. He's on the number six on the most read Amazon chart. He's got all these formats. Blah blah blah. Sure. All right. So here's your. What do you call it? Blurb. Yeah. It tells you how long it is. Um. Does it? Does yeah. everyone? Everyone knows that Nelson Mandela was a terrorist, right? Or now? Do people not know that? That's a whole other conversation. But Have right. you ever heard of the Mandela effect? Because that's a whole other conversation. I, yeah, too. those are two big conversations. All right, keep going. Sorry. Right. Um, okay, so here is his rank in the Kindle store, right? 1,000, which is really good. But he's number one in this category. Humor and entertainment. Yes, please. And whisper sync for voice. This, this means a lot of people are um, getting his... his uh, Audiobook. His propaganda. All right, go on. Right. So bestsellers in humor and entertainment. So you see that there? You can you can be a bestseller in your category and and get your your tab. So um like this where it says number one bestseller in historical autobiographies. So hmm. like that's you can see how he's a number one bestseller in this, but he's nineteen thousand in the store. Oh, so there's a lot of categories. Yeah. Oh, there's a a lot of categories. A lot of categories. What I wonder what category I should do because mine could be a lot of different ones. It could be comedy, or it also could be uh, I don't know, marriage, parenting. Um, um let me go back to uh. 
can stop you, sharing. Can, um, can you so do sound? Oh, can you do? You, go ahead. Uh, for you, I would say there's like the the comedian category. There's actors and actresses. Um, you could be in both. There's um, humor essays. There's there's a lot of categories, and the thing is, there's two what's called BISAC categories. So now we're getting to the little nitty gritty, which might might be boring for some people. So if you ever want to talk about it, like off yeah. the stream, I'd be happy to get into it with you. But um, Can we start our own category of uh, bears. <laughs> Bear literacy. That would be pretty funny. Yeah. But you can you can put it. It would basically the main category would be nonfiction, narrative, memoir, humor. Nice. Is what I'm thinking would be the main thing. But then there's on Amazon they have subcategories. You can even contact them. Uh, the publishing side and talk to them and ask them, um, tell them which category specifically you would like to have. Cool. You know, you send, just send them a few. If you send them a lot, they might not do it. Dude, someone just wrote, written by bears for bears. <laughs> <laughs> That's wicked funny. Well, cool. Well, thank you. Tell people where they can get your uh, your new books and, and where they can get anything. And, um, and I appreciate uh -oh. everything. Where can people thank find you? you? Um, I am on Facebook. Um, I'm on Twitter. If you just search for me, Shoshana Gabriel. I'm also tweeting as Shoshana Evers. I tweet as both, but you know, it's mainly just like life stuff, mom stuff. I have three kids. Now, good for you. That's yeah. great. Congrats. Oh, thank you. Um, and um, uh, I'm Shoshana Gabriel. Shoshana with two N's is uh, my website. Uh, yeah, that's my website. Shoshana Gabriel awesome. and um, I guess oh on Amazon just go on Amazon and look 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 up Shoshana Gabriel and or Shoshana Evers if you want to see what I used to write but I'm not I'm not promoting that um, <laughs> that smut <laughs> I'm not promoting you know it's funny because I used to call that this I'll just do it quick this is um, the new one I don't know if you can see it nice this, Sweet. The ranchers. Oh, and this is a paperback. I self-published this one. Paperback writer. It's a nice paperback. I love it. Um, so you can do that too, and you don't need, and you can have, you know, fancy stuff going on in it. You don't need to have it, have it done through a publisher to have it look really good. Well, you give me hope, and I appreciate everything. And let's uh, let's do this again. Let's get into the nitty gritty. Thank you. Okay, I'd love to. And tell your husband I want to be his best friend when I move to Washington. I want to go hunting and playing guitars. Okay, I will let him know. All right, <laughs> All right later. Thanks. Bye. That was fun. That girl's awesome. I hope you guys had fun. Good times. Yeah, that girl's great. She's um, just cool. Just a writer. A paperback writer. That's the beauty of, of the internet. As much as I can bitch about it sometimes, it's like, just imagine telling yourself that 20 years ago. That let's if you wanted to learn a skill... You could just make friends with someone online and then have them on your show that thousands of people will watch and also learn how to self-publish so that you can sell more than Trevor Noah. Here's the thing, guys. We got to outsell Trevor Noah, and I'm going to need your help. I'm going to price it low. I'm going to price it reasonable, but on the low side. Why? Because a, a much bigger goal than money is beating Trevor Noah. So we have to figure this out because uh, Trevor Noah buys his own books. Well, I think George Soros bought, you know, two or 3,000 of them for sure. And she just recently converted a la Andrew Clavin, another life changed by Jesus. That's from Nurse Practitioner Bear. Let's see if I have any super chats. Today's pretty light on the super chats. I got, a, I got a real solid one, though, from Nurse Practitioner Bear. Super chats and YouTube notifications are working. Have the Silicon Valley leftards forgiven you for your unconscionable uh, racism? Keep fighting. You're saving comedy almost single-handedly. Thank you, Nurse Practitioner Bear. Tell that to everybody else who uh, hasn't been super chatting. That's weird. Is there a ban on me today or some shit? Because normally it's like packed. And we have like 800 people watching right now. It doesn't matter, but just it looks odd. Usually there's so many I can't even read them. That's weird. All right, let's check out the PayPal. Paperback writer, writer. Bunch of fucking assholes. I'm just kidding. 
Hi, Owen. I like that you're interested in archery. If you want to learn how to shoot better, look up John Dudley. He taught Rogan how to shoot. He has great instructional uh, videos on YouTube. The trick to archery is hunting in the Northeast. Is Oh, hunting in the Northeast is ambushing the deer. Last year, the doe I shot in PA was five yards away. Inspector Bear. Yeah, the deer up here are so cocky. Like, they don't have any predators, so they get real arrogant. Like, it's really, really infuriating like i wanted to start taking them out from my porch like hard all right let's check the bear phone enough's enough it's time to check the bear phone um oh this is from coder bear check skype audio settings it's on your side not hers yeah I, adm I admitted i was wrong i think we can all admit that i admitted all right what we got here I want to share something that happened to me last week. I was changing lanes in my giant plumbing truck and a lady in a little black car was in my blind spot. I, I like saying in my, she was in my blind. It almost sounds like you're, you're, uh, you're like a, an avid hunter or a, uh, a military guy. You know, it's like when, when, when Nimmers told me like, yo dude, I got your six. I'm like, man, I, I, I wish I talked like that. I'm like, I will support you if things go wrong. And then now we get shot. I, I sideswiped her and made sure she was okay. Oh, wait a minute. Did I miss something? I sideswiped her and made sure she was okay and we called the police. The officer showed up and was super nice and ended up not giving me a ticket. I realized my white privilege that day. The, officer, the officer's name was white, but he was a black man. I told my liberal coworker that story and he said I was a racist. Not that I care. Yeah, you're not a racist, dude. That's a funny story. His name was white. And he was black. Oh, Cowboy Bear. I love Cowboy Bear. Hey, bud. If you want to swap dark stories, um, I can hang with you. One, I got more upset the days that I don't remember what happened. All right. More personal stuff. I don't, I, I don't know what, the, what, the, what I should do about personal messages. Because some people love sharing. They, they love that I can tell people their story. And others, I don't know if they do. So it's always, uh, it's always a coin flip. I was, who is this? Hang on. Currently simulcasting your show based, and I've been chatting a lot about my station. Keep up the great work. Uh, hope I wasn't one of your trolls. No, dude. Guys. See, this is the thing about like uh, being in contact with a, a huge amount of people. Is sometimes people will just write me like something funny. Like call me like a big dumb oaf. Or, uh... Or send me a bunch of te texts or messages that I don't respond to. And they think that I'm referring to them. Dude, I'm referring to people that are like, I'm going to fucking kill you. That aren't joking. Like, I'm not a pussy. I Like, when I'm, like, being vague, it, I'm not referring to people that, uh, uh, that just, like, hit me up a lot or make fun of me. I think that's funny. I appreciate that, especially, you know, in this society. Like, if someone can just make fun of me, I feel like a huge amount of relief. So just know I'm not talking about you if, if I say these things. I'm talking about people that literally threaten my life. <laughs> so, so just know that. All right, what do we got here? Thought you might want to show the pic above of, of Obama's on stream. The stuff sent before the pic is just for you to add my info on in the phone. Uh, so it doesn't need to be run the stream. All right, where's the pic? I'll figure that out after. One more. One more here, and then we'll we'll play some music. I'm actually glad that we don't have a lot of Super Chats today. That's fine. I'll make the best of it. I'll just make it a music day. Uh, oh, and I used to get emails to join blackpeoplemeet.com all the time. My skin is super white, LOL. Good to see you back on the bare phone. You better take tomorrow off for your birthday. Tomorrow, I'm not taking tomorrow off for my birthday. You want to know what I'm going to do on my birthday? I'm going to open everything that you guys send to me at the P.O. Box. I've been thinking about this for a while now. I want it to be present day. I've been saving up. I've been saving up a lot of packages that you guys have sent me because I want to do it on my birthday. Tomorrow's my birthday. Tomorrow's my birthday. Din -din 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 -din. Uh, how did you solve your connection problems from Field of Bears? My, I don't know why. Like This is the, this is the deal. I, my thing, my audio was, was not allowing something, but... Every day it works fine with Crowder. I Oh, I got it. I figured it out. It's because 
I was using, I didn't have my Yeti mic plugged in during my morning uh, writing sessions. I had my phone plugged in to charge. And then I, uh, I plugged in my Yeti and I didn't switch it over. My rural internet is killing the show. What are you talking about? Oh, who is this? Oh, this dude's great. All right, what else we got here? Builder Bears is the man. Bayonet Bob. Oh, dude, Bayonet Bob is crushing. The funniest thing about Bob, because Bob uh, has been doing all the audio stuff, because our audio is by far the biggest amount of listens. It's on iTunes and Stitcher and Podbean. Like, I'm one of the top on Podbean right now. I think it's called Podbean. And, uh, and he's so obsessed about it that I love it. Like, in the middle of the night, I'll look at my phone. And he's like, dude, we're spiking in Japan right now. And, uh, and then I'll see like, there's 10 texts from, from Bayonet Bob and I haven't written back and he's like, everything good. I'm like, yeah, dude, I just, uh, I just, like, cause I don't have my phone on me a lot during the day, oddly. Cause I used to, I used to always be connected and Amy would tell me I was in refresh mode. That's what it w- she would call it. Where I would just like be in this Twitter world of war all the time. And so I would always text back to everybody like immediately. And now I literally try to keep my phone away from me while I'm doing like while I'm doing family time or doing yard work, which I've been doing a ton of. Like when I'm doing tree work with my brother, uh, not a lot of phone. So it's really funny when you see like tons of of texts from people that are like, "Yo, uh, just especially when it comes to like data, like people get so pumped about because I get pumped about it. I love demo demographic stuff like uh, like Nimmer's." Special is sold now in like 40 countries. And I wrote that to him and he was like, how did that happen? And I said, I got reach my N-word because I, out of respect, say N-word. Like, oh, those dirty N-words. You know, because it's all about context. Because if you say N-word, nothing's offensive. Like, all oh, that, those filthy stealing N-words. Kyle Cavanaugh. Hi, Owen. I'll be in Ontario at the beginning of July and was planning on dipping down to visit the Bear Jew for a beer. Since it's going to be my birthday on July 4th, born on the 4th of July, baby, Tom Cruise. I was hoping the three of us could grab a beer in Saranac Lake. I don't need a place to crash as I'm going to have my touring set up. I just want to celebrate my birthday with good people and we'll be a few days away from home. Absolutely. That sounds great. We don't take too kindly to know Bear Jews and Canadians around here, though. Tell you that. A modest proposal was about eating babies to curb the hunger problem in whatever year place they were in. Yeah. Modest proposal was dark satire written by good old Jonathan Swift and no one got the joke and they kicked him out of Ireland. Bunch of assholes. Big Bear, Genghis and I caught up last week to discuss UNN additions and automation. Additionally, him and I are looking to develop and create satire cartoons uh, v comics for the site similar to what you'd see in uppity new york times or something my wife and i just added a daughter bear to the den last week boom congrats on your latest bear on the way love the show bro keep up the good work and let us know when you come to wisconsin wisco bear congrats and what a great idea i've just let the bears like do their thing with um with unn with unbearable news network like I'm, i've obviously set tones and guidance and whatnot but just seeing you guys light up and Base Texan was texting me that uh, one of the guys was telling them, they're like, dude, this is my dream job. Like a few people have written like, this is what I've always wanted to do, like write satirical news. And uh, it doesn't pay anything now. At some point it might. You know, the, the website's getting a lot of traffic. Unbearablenewsnetwork.com. But it's cool just to be able to step back. and I'm Because I'm focusing hard right now on, on the book. Oh, I forgot to ask how many words it should be. Right now I'm at 65,000. It was done, but now I'm like fixing more stuff because it's just been kind of sitting there for a few months. But we got to get that. We got to beat Trevor Noah, man. We got to. It's, it's needed. All right. Oh, hit the like button and share, by the way. Don't be, don't be fucking assholes. Give this to Amy. It's food, not beer. Can I be verified as Hammer Bear? Welcome, Hammer Bear. Washington needs a big bear. The soy saturation is deep here. I will be in Washington. Yeah, and I'm, we're, I think we're keeping this house and renting it. I don't think I can sell this house. I, I honestly have been being, I've been like fucking jammed up about it. 
I honestly don't think I can sell the house. Like I, I just have too many memories here. Because it was the first place I'd ever lived in that I thought I was going to die in. So we're going to rent it. So that definitely changes what we can afford in Washington, but I frankly don't give a fuck. We're keeping this house. It's the perfect location. It's, it's flat, but it's on a hill. Fuck it. You should talk to reporter Tim Poole. There were a lot of bears on his live stream last night. You guys can complain about leftist fake news. Yeah, I'm in. I like that guy. Kyle's coming east. We we're getting beers in Saranac Lake. I heard, I heard him bear Jew. Unless it's one of your weird fucking Jew holidays where you can't pick up a phone or like touch a nickel or whatever fucking stupid rules you guys follow. Uh, Owen, what are some of your favorite bands? Oh, I got a ton. Let's just start playing music here. Love to hear more on writing and structuring a book. We got to, uh, Super Chat is working. Thank you, Nama Bear. I guess just no one gives a fuck. I'm just kidding. I don't, you don't need to Super Chat me. I just thought it was weird because normally there's literally like scrolling and there was just three the whole time, especially talking to like a former erotic novel writer. I would have had so many fucking questions. Smack that like and share button or you like getting pissed on by Chelsea Handler. Thank you, Roy Bear. Thank you, Trigger Bear. All right, let's do some music. Did I get blocked on the bear phone? Of course not, Dom. No, not working bear. Why would you be blocked on the bear phone? Why would anybody be blocked on the bear phone that's a good bear? No, the people that I, I, I don't like are the people that threaten my fucking life. All right, I'm going to get in the normal chat, but just come on, guys. None of this fucking crazy trolley stuff that you guys do. I get that it releases cortisol. And it's addicting, but just be good. Just be fun. My birthday's today. Hell yeah, Tracy. Oh, did you just, someone, oh, Tracy just gave me a sick super chat. So uh, let, let's make a Tracy day. Today's your birthday. Uh, that's from Mama Bear. Read my PayPal, please. So Tracy, I won't be able to see what you're doing right now because I'm going to check out Mama Bear's uh, PayPal. Uh, but come up with some songs you want to hear. That's from Neil. Hey, Owen, I live in Olympia. After you move to Washington, if you get to Olympia, would love to buy you beer or lunch. Uh, dude, we're actually looking there to live potentially, but um, I'm down with the whole state. I also like Northern Idaho. Bring your whole family if you want. That would be great. You could check out our soy city. Oh, is Olympia soy? Fuck. Still some great people here, though. What is happening to the world? Where's Mama Bears? Now, or... Mm hmm. I I don't see it. Will you just write it here on here? Uh, play Amelie again. Yeah, I can play that. Where's now? Where? Hey, Owen Benjamin, did you see my PayPal from yesterday? I thought I read all of them. See, I don't know what you guys missed, like when you guys got in or or not, because I did uh. I read a bunch earlier. He should know it. I've sent him the music. Bohemian Rhapsody. Where's Tracy? Verified May 10th, Southern Comfort Bear. Love it. Tracy, what song do you want to hear? Uh, I like Head Like a Troll. Oh, Head Like a Hole. Can anyone fill me in on the Canna Bear drama? Yeah, just don't even get, don't even go down those roads. Those are dark roads, guys. Hey, Big Bear, I hope you do a show in Milwaukee someday. I like Milwaukee. Thanks, Bear. Classic rock. All right, classic rock. So first, Mad City by Kendrick Lamar. That's hilarious. Yeah, we're doing that because that's in the news, that, that fucking asshole. Mad City. I'll do a... Uh, he got some white girl on stage to, to sing along, and then when she did, using the lyrics that he wrote, he stopped it and then like got mad at her for saying, saying the word in, in which the, the whites aren't allowed to say. Fuck you, who you know, where you from? 
from my nigga. Where your grandma stay, huh, my nigga? This mad city I run, my nigga. Well, you gotta brace yourself, I take you on a trip down memory lane. This is not a rap on how I'm slinging crack or I move cocaine. This is called a sack, plenty of cognac and major pain. Not the drill sergeant, but the stress that's weighing on your brain. Man down, where you from, my nigga? Fuck who you know, where you from, my nigga? Where your grandma stay, huh, my nigga? This is Mad City, I run, my nigga. My nigga. Skin nigga with his brains blown out at the same burger stand where I hang out. Now, this is not a tape recording saying that he did it, but ever since that day, I was looking at him different. That was back when I was nine, Joey packing that nine. Pack a stand on every porch is fine. We adapt to crime. Pack a van with four guns at a time, my nigga. Where you from, my nigga? Where your grandma stay, huh, my nigga? This mad city I run, my nigga. The sliding door fucked up. Fuck you shooting for if you ain't walking up. You fucking punk. Picking up the fucking pump. Picking off your suckers. Suck a dick or die on a sucker punch. If Prius and Crips got along, they'd probably gun me down. By the end of the song, seems like a whole city up against me. Every time I'm in the streets, I hear, yawk, 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 yawk. Man down, where you from, my nigga? Fuck who you know, where you from, my nigga? Where your grandma stay, huh, huh, my nigga? This is mad city I run, my nigga. that doesn't get clipped and put on the clip channel, I don't know what the fuck you guys are doing. All right, what do we got here? Did Andrew Schultz ask permission to use your tighter joke? No, not at all. And when he found out that, see, I didn't get mad at that. I figured that was uh, parallel thinking, but a lot of people have told him that I've done it for a long time, like in two specials, and he didn't stop doing it. But that's fine. That's his choice. Bad News Bear wants Ben Fold still fighting it. I don't know it yet. I'm sorry. Side note, if people want to leave the community, that's fine. Just don't act like a child on the way out. Also, I don't care why you left. Yeah, who cares? Dude, get the fuck out of here. It's, it's less than 1%, guys, are bad bears. Dude, the bears are the coolest fucking people on the planet. Like, you can't let, you know, a couple rotten apples ruin the whole bunch. 
The only reason I took it personally is because a couple of them I just I tried to help financially. And I think that breeds resentment in a weird way. I can't explain I can't explain it, but it was fucking weird. But it's just dumb noise drama that keeps you away from your goals and your life and fun and awesomeness. And we have a, a predisposition to uh, genetically to, to look at threats. And the computer is, is just a threat machine. So focus on the ones that actually matter, you know, not these fucking idiots. Good luck in Washington. Stay clear of Seattle. You may like Roy. If Roy's a place, yeah. Nurse, thank you, practitioner bear. Uh, bears beat Battlestar Galactica. Uh, bears really shouldn't believe in white privilege, though. Well, they can believe what they want. I don't. <laughs> I think white privilege is retarded. And if anyone wants to rewatch uh, Larry Elder break that down, no one gives a fuck we're having fun. Hell yeah, Dilev. What up, Nimmer? I've been researching water law. You gave me advice at law school in Pitt. That's what I'm talking about. Talk about real shit. All right, what else you guys want to hear? Where you down in there, my nigga? Where your grandma live, huh? My nigga. I've never even heard that song. Okay, so uh, I'm really tired of hearing about privilege. Yeah, everyone is, is way, is, is, uh, is so tired of it all. Asian privilege? No, that, there's no privilege. Birthday song for Tracy. I need to know more about you. Tracy, give me some deets. And I'll do some class. You like classic rock? I want to make it about Tracy. Play some Cheryl Crow, says Dilev. Uh, I can do some... I can do some Cheryl, Cheryl Crow. I just want more in, intel on Tracy so I can write her a birthday song. Uh, oh, and damn, smash it up. Yeah, hit the like button, everybody. Come on. Come on. Don't be gay. 58-year-old woman, no crow. Oh, so no Cheryl Crow? So now I have, an, I have, an, I have a number. You're 58 today. If I hear the real song now, I'll be disappointed because Owen rocked it. Oh, thanks. Moonlight Sonata, third part. I can do that. I'm just looking for more Tracy. It's her birthday. Sweet Palestine. That's hilarious. The Bangles, Barry White, play we wheelchair in the sky. <laughs> um, come on, Tracy. Give me some more intel. Tracy, need a man, LOL. Okay, so I got you 58 and you need a man. So let's do uh, Sinner Man. I need a man. I need a man. I just turned 58 now. My name is Tracy. I need a man, yeah. I said, man, where am I going to get a man? Don't you see I need a man? It's my birthday, all on the day. So I run to the bar. All the men were drunk, I ran to the bar. They were drunk, I ran to the bar. They were drunk, all on the day. So I went to the coffee shop. They were sipping soy, yeah, I ran to the coffee shop. They were sipping soy, yeah, I ran to the coffee shop. They were sipping soy. All on that day, so I went to a college. They had chopped the dicks off, I ran to college. Oh, they chopped the dicks off, I ran to the college. Yeah, all on that day. And a soy boy said, Happy birthday, a soy boy said. Today's your birthday, a soy boy said. Today's your birthday, I said, No, you ain't got no dick. Oh, and my super chat said that I leave my son in piano if he finds a book. Oh, oh yeah. Did I not read that? I'm going to read that because I like, I, I thought about that a lot. Let me read that. And I ran to the devil. It was bleeding. I ran to the sea. It was bleeding. I ran to the sea. It was bleeding all on them day. The moon cried out. I ain't going to hide you. The rock cried out. I ain't gonna hide you in the rock right out. That song is so good. Oh, real quick, this is from Keith. Redacted Bear here. Here's some honey, you filthy beggar. Just kidding, got my flask, thanks. Love it. No, I wasn't begging, I, I didn't want money. I thought it was broken. I swear to God. It was just so, like, low. Like, it was like, because usually that's my way of avoiding trolls. 
Because trolls never pay shit. And so all the people in the chat that are like, you filthy coward, you won't talk to my Nazi friend. You know, like all those guys, they don't ever pay a dollar. So like, that's one thing that, that has made me like really, really like Super Chats because it's kind of saved my brain uh, from just being in darkness all the time. Oh, Gus. Oh, Gus, me and Gus are going to do sketches. Appreciate you, Owen. Wheelchair puns made me laugh last night. Are you good with the green screen? I can explain the ideal setup in 10 minutes. Yeah, we should do a, we should do a, um, another Skype. I think it's, it's fun to Skype with bears. All right, so I can't find a fucking thing. But what, basically what she was asking is, is there a kid was getting disinterested in, in piano? Should she make him play the piano or let him do other shit? I think you should have them commit to it. Cause that's one of the things you were saying is, uh, is, uh, like teach them the, the value of commitment. I honestly don't remember what kept me attached to the piano. I always just loved it. But I also believe that, that kids should be given, don't get me wrong. They should be given a lot of, um, Got you know, spoil, spare the rod, spoil the child type thing with guidance. You know, like they, they should be guided and protected and rules and without boundaries, they get all shitty. But what they naturally drift to is, is a lot of times what they're going to be unbelievably good at. You know, John Taylor Gatto talked about that, where it's like, um, everybody is this is this is going to sound so gay, but everybody is special. And like, they, they kind of tell you when they're young, what they're drawn to. And, and sometimes it's like, Gatto was talking about how this one kid, um, this one kid was really into co- just drawing in class and he didn't want to pay attention. He was drawing. So, so Gatto was like, get really into drawing. He's like, write book, like write your next paper on the, the best cartoonists of the fifties. You know, like he's giving him guidance, but he's like, and the, and the kid just lit up. He was this inner city kid. And he ended up having like this, this huge career in drawing, you know, like, like what people would rather be doing than being in class is what they should do with their life. You know, like if someone's just doodling, like get into that shit. And it doesn't have to be like a professional artist. Cause a lot of these jobs, there's not that many of them. And it's not really responsible to be like, oh yeah, you can be a, a cartoonist, but there's so many careers, some of which haven't even been invented yet around what you love. And when you focus on what you love, you learn everything else by proxy. Like in order for me to understand World War II, which was my major in college, I had to understand like a thousand years of history before it. Because you don't understand World War II unless you understand the Treaty of Versailles. You don't understand the Treaty of Versailles unless you understand World War I. You don't understand World War I unless you understand Otto von Bismarck and the Ottoman Empire and monarchies and... uh, Tsar Nicholas II and, you know, like uh, militarism, uh, self-determination, alliances, all this shit. Like, and then from there, you have to go back. You don't understand any of that unless you understand the Magna Carta. And like, like, you have to seriously understand so much shit to get why these people did what they did. Because on the surface, the reason I was a World War II history major was because I passionately wanted to know how that happened. Because I don't get why people don't have follow-up questions where it'll just show Auschwitz or it'll show like Dachau or show like the atomic bomb in in Japan. And people are just like, that happened. And no one's like, why and how? Because then that's why there's this fascination with Adolf Hitler, who honestly isn't that special of of a character in history to me personally. I think he was an inevitability in a lot of ways. Like, how do you not have a Hitler in that situation? But anyway, um, in order to have a Holocaust, so many people have to follow madness that you can't just say it was one. It's not like, um, it's not like, uh, like a serial killer, like just one fucked up guy, like that cannibal guy, the, the, the guy that was shanked in prison, whatever. Like, like, okay, like there are certain, like, okay, Charles Manson. I even was just about to say Charles Manson, but you don't understand Charles Manson unless you understand his upbringing, you know, his abandonment, his, his time in, um, in an orphanage where he was constantly raped and beaten. 
Uh, you don't understand his relationship with his mother, his, his abandonment from his father. Um, like you can't under, and, and that was going to be my example of a random bad guy. So how do you get to World War II? Because I won't demonize a nation state. I won't just say Germans are fucked up. I, that's just not in me because I know that isn't true. I've like my mother's very German and I, 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 it just isn't in me to say like, oh, this group of people just sucks. So then you have to learn about all of it because World War II is just the second half of World War I. And I think one of the worst people in history was President Woodrow Wilson, who we should never have been in World War I. It was it was a it was a war between monarchs in an old uh in the old world and like us coming in and funding the British and because like no one really can explain why it even happened. That's one reason why there's not a lot of movies about World War One is because you have to understand Archduke Ferdinand was assassinated by Prince Seep in the Black Hand, right? Why? So people get assassinated. How does that lead to World War One? Well, uh, the Balkans are the freshwater port of Russia, and then you have Otto von Bismarck. And all his old alliance system. And then, you know, when the Germans went through Belgium, that was a neutral country, it brought England in. Like, there isn't a smoking gun. There isn't like this... It's not like World War II, where you have Hitler invades Czech Republic, Poland. Fucking, like, uh... Like, th th there's clear reasons why people started going to war in World War II. World War I, there isn't, right? So you have uh, Woodrow Wilson does that. He, he brings in the, the income tax... He, we get off the gold standard. I don't know. Forget that. I don't know when that was. That could have been the seventies. I don't know why the fuck. I don't know that federal reserve was 1913. I've been researching that a ton. I just am not ready to report yet. But, uh, the treaty of Versailles bankrupted Germany to a degree that is so crazy. I don't know why the Netflix specials aren't like the men who wrote treaty of Versailles. It's always Hitler's weapons. Yeah, yeah, like, you understand the Treaty of Versailles was fucking crazy. It dismantled a population. It, it gave all, like, Germany would still be paying reparations, I think, now. Now, yeah, they'd still be paying reparations now without an army, if, if they had followed that. If they didn't have a Hitler, they would have just been destroyed. They were done. They were the Assyrian Empire. They, they would be wiped from the fucking history books. And, um... It goes without saying I'm not justifying Hitler's actions. I mean, but I, I feel like you guys, I, I have to assume that people are intelligent enough to follow this, this line of thought and that I don't have to say Hitler bad. But you don't get Hitler without the Treaty of Versailles and you don't get the Treaty of Versailles without Woodrow Wilson who pushed the League of Nations, uh, pushed for a League of Nations that was total shit and then we got the UN, which is shit. The globalist fucking bullshit that it's trying to do this reparations. For those of you guys that that didn't see earlier. Let me just show you real quick. So UN panel says U.S. owes reparations to African Americans. Why? I wrote only if they pay for all the stolen bikes, which of course is satire, but satire reveals truth and exaggeration. I mean, I, I, like you can't even think that reparations are, are possible or could do any good. It would set a legal precedent where the Irish would say, okay, well now I want reparations from the English. And the Czechs would say, well, what about the, uh, what's the name of that empire that no one even remembers anymore? The, uh, it's from the 1600s. Fuck. The, uh, Habsburg, the Habsburgs. You know, everyone would just be paying reparations forever. Like Germany would get reparations from Italy for making them slaves. The Slavs in Eastern Europe would be getting reparations for everyone. But they really wouldn't because the only people retarded enough to pay reparations are fucking white people. We're so fucking pathetic sometimes. It's like, okay, whatever you want. Where you from, my nigga? The Moors occupied Sicily for 300 years. Where's my reparations? I know, right? The North African Moors, the, 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 the first Muslim uh, migrant crisis was a, a caliphate that lasted centuries. Until finally the, the, the Crusades happened. I was raised to think the Crusades was um, uh, Christians just killing Muslims. No. No. All right, let me read some of these. Now I know why I don't listen to Kendrick Lamar or modern music at all. It's actually kind of a pretty song if you play it to the right music. I might try that again. Why celebrate a person's birthday? They didn't do a damn thing that day. 
their mother did all the work and nine minutes before that, their father did all the work. That's hilarious. Or nine months before that. Um, you celebrate a birthday because it's, 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 uh, it's, uh, it makes time relevant. I used to, I used to feel like how you did Ryan. My best friend also died on my birthday. So it used to be a really, uh, troubling day for me. But then I realized that, uh, traditions and holidays are important. They just are. And I'm just not going to fuck with it anymore. I'm not going to try and rethink anything. I think all this rethinking of the world is not a, a blast. But that is a funny joke, though. Your mom... Yeah, Mother's Day should be your birthday. <laughs> your birthday should be Mother's Day. Where it's like you call up your mom and you're like, Mom, sorry for just... Because, I mean, I fucked up my mom a little bit, I think. My mom had to get surgery, like, decades later. Because I was 11 pounds and I think I, like, fucked things up. I was too big. And she's six feet tall. Six one back then, I believe. She says no, but she she was. Big Bear, any recommendations for guitar theory? I know basics, but I'm not sure where to take it. By the way, love shooting the shit with you and Guck in Minneapolis. Oh, thank you. Uh, I don't know shit about the guitar, but I'm sure one of the bears do. Get, go on um, go on unbearablesapp.com and you'll get all the info you need about anything. Your mother's beautiful. Thank you. She is beautiful. I'm not a troll. Don't forget PayPal. Follow me on Twitter. M. Jeremy Fillin. P-H-E-L-A-N. Not you, obviously degenerate. Oh, yeah, it's fine. Yeah, I can't follow anyone on Twitter. Thanks for rubbing that in, though. JBP's anger in the monk debate was a P-E-D. Agree? What's P-E-D mean? Anyone know what P-E-D means? P-E-D? Anybody? There is a Bears Discord. I've never been in it, though. But I, the app I like, I like a lot. What's a B E what's a P E D? Just watch your mom's react to a priceless pedigree. Penile enhancing drugs. Thank you, Scott. Performance enhancing drugs. Uh pedigree. I don't know what P E D means. Performance enhancing drug. Personal emotional discovery. Where's Shiloh Sanders? <laughs> Steroids? No. He's, he can't even eat carbs. I don't think he's putting steroids in his body. Steroids? No. There's no way. <laughs> Paris climbing accord. Testicles test the best of us. Thank you, Lin Yen. Performance enhancing drug, HGH. Um, I don't know. What do you guys think? Do you think there's uh, he's doing HGH? I w- I'd respect that. I'd respect HGH. If you're 52 and you just became a fucking rock star, I mean, um, why not? I mean, it does grow cancer, though. It's not something I'd fuck around with, but uh, fuck it. We've all been there with the HGH. Jordan says his temptation is alcohol. Oh, for sure. You can tell. He's a talker like me. He's a talker. Talkers love booze. Like, people that love ideas and people. He's definitely not on steroids, Shiloh Sanders. For sure not. Um, I was just, I was mostly joking. Owen, this joke is for the trolls with blue eyes. You're so full of Smurf shit, your eyes are blue. Oh, that's good, Roy. Well, I have blue eyes, so I don't know if I like that. He loves psychedelics. I think he's one of those guys that probably has done it a few times to get more enlightened. But he said, uh, he quoted that one dude, Kenna... It was not Kenna, McKenna. He said, uh, be wary of undeserved wisdom or unearned wisdom. He talks to crazy people. Yeah, like me. I, uh, that's why dudes like me are, are drawn to booze. Same with my brother, same with a lot of people. It's not that alcoholic feeling that I, like I've had alcoholism explained to me by, by you know, some Native Americans. And uh, it's not like that. Like, I don't just, like, crave booze. I I like all the high-fiving that comes with it. Like, there's nothing like hanging out with interesting people and talking at a bar with beers. Like, there's nothing like it. Or sitting on a porch or around a fire. It's it's really fun. It's a a talker's... I, I can't explain it. I just love it. But if I'm alone, or if I'm not, like... Or if I'm just like with my family or what whatnot, I don't really have that much of a draw towards it. Social inhibition, not for me. For me, and I think dudes like Peterson, it's uh, like I'm not a socially inhibited person at all. 
It's just a talker's delight. Fake bonding. Interesting. I think getting like smashed is fake bonding. Like I don't even really do shot. Like sometimes when I'm out and we do a show and the bears are all out and people send me shots, I'll, I'll, I'll shred some shots. But that to me is over in my life. Like a uh, shot, my shot phase is, is way behind me. I feel like shots can like shred you a little bit. You know, I'm, I'm going to be 38 tomorrow. It's not really, uh, it's not really responsible or that's, that's, that, that to me is like, uh, is fake bonding, like shots, but like beers is fucking great. That's why I love the Bear Steins. All right, let me uh, play you guys something and then we'll, uh, I'm going to do that Kendrick Lamar song one more time. I'm going to play you guys a good video. I'm going to play you guys a good little video here. I ain't going to hide you the rock front. I want to play the one of my brother's story. I just have to find it. Oh, Walter playing lacrosse is so damn cute. It's so darn cr cute. Yeah, like this is my bit. For those of you that haven't seen it, about why women are crazy. This is this is like what my comedy was always known for. I'm really not that political. I just if you you can ignore politics, but politics can't ignore you won't ignore you. I love that quote. Because the reason that I hammer on SJWs and identity politics and all this bullshit these days is um, because it's a direct threat to my career, my family, my way of life. Uh, and that's why I find it so important. But in general, this is more my speed and this will help your relationship. This is called why women are crazy. This was taped in, I believe Michigan. So here you go. Enjoy. But the flip side guys, if they're going to accept that bullshit, and it is bullshit that we're like that. It's fucked up, but we, we don't want to be like that, but we just are. We have to accept their shit. They're crazy, right? But they should be crazy because that's the only reason we're alive right now. And I'll explain. Back in the day, caveman times, like a girl would have a baby, she'd be vulnerable, right? She'd be like, can you get us food? And the dude's like, yeah, fuck yeah. <laughs> and he'd see like a woolly mammoth. He's like, oh yeah. Christ chasing this fucking thing. He has no idea where he is. His maps won't be invented for like 50,000 years. He's like, oh shit, and then he dies. That's what, back in the day, there was no Siri, guys. You got lost, you're fucking dead. You don't run into anyone either. There's like five million people on the whole planet, right? So she doesn't get food, so she dies, baby dies. They're all gone. <laughs> Wiped off the fucking face of the earth. Scenario number two. Will you get us food? The guy's like, hell yeah. He sees a bunch of berries. He's like, everyone says not to eat those, but fuck that. Dead. Poison berries. So she's dead. Baby's dead. They're all fucking dead. Scenario number three. Will you get us food? He's like, yeah. He sees another girl's ass. That chick has a dude. Wham! He fucking suffocates because he got punched in the throat. So he dies. So his girl dies and his baby dies. This is sad sad tale if it keeps going like that but it didn't keep going like that one woman at some point in history was like will you get us food the dude's like yes yeah. she's like bring a map don't eat those berries who's that fucking bitch <laughs> that's real and then the, the dude the dude's like i haven't even left yet what's your fucking problem and the girl's like my problem is that you're a fucking dumb animal and you're gonna get us killed. So get the food where I can fucking see you. Where I can see you. She lived, her baby lived and had babies and that's why everyone's fucking crazy. But we need to be crazy to stay alive. <laughs> but here's the flip side. Life has gotten a lot easier. It's not like, you know, poison berries and fucking mastodons and shit. But they still have that gene. I call it soap opera music, guys. Women will sometimes get this in their head for no reason. It just... Like, nothing's causing it, but they think something's fucking wrong. And not, nothing causes it. And by the way, I just did a whole thing about how dudes love draining balls and stuff. Monogamy's still the move. Like, to be a real man, you have to look into the eyes of insanity and stay. <laughs> like that, 
It's not about fucking a ton of chicks. It's being like, you're crazy, but we're good. Oh, fine. You want the heat up? You just probably just lost six grand. Right? Like, just stick it out. Like, that will play in a woman's head randomly. This is what's in a man's head from birth until death. That's fucking it. We're good time people. And we'll get pissed off. The dog just pissed on the floor. Ah, oh, we got a towel. We're good. We think in straight lines. Problem, solution, bullet jobs. Linear. Here's a fight between a man and a woman with their appropriate soundtracks. Hey, baby, how was your day? How was my day? Well, you wouldn't know if you checked in. I, uh, I uploaded a picture of a, a sad sunflower on Instagram. It said, this is me right now. Hashtag real shit. I guess you didn't even care. You didn't fucking look. I'm sorry, baby, I don't have Wi-Fi. Let's fuck, you're so hot, I'm gonna fuck you so bad. I just said I had a bad day. Can you pump the brakes for a second? Can we just talk like humans? Yeah, 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 I don't wanna fuck, I was just kidding. Ha, ha, ha. I was just joking. Oh, you don't wanna fuck me anymore? What's wrong with me? You don't wanna touch me? You think there's something, you don't think I'm attractive anymore? No, 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 I wasn't joking. I'll fuck you right now. Let's fuck. I'll see you lie about joking. You just lied to me. You just fucking lied to me. Just tell me what to say and I'll say it. That's it. Thank you. Full bellies and empty balls. I'm running for U.S. Senate. All right, so that's my expertise. But it's interesting how... Let me check the bear phone. It's interesting how... That expertise actually translates to politics and stuff because I'm just, I'm really into people and how they communicate. Uh, who is this from? Mama, Mama's super chat said, "Should I leave my son in piano lessons if he's there? If he's, if they're boring? He's got an ear and is talented, but impatient and says he already knows how to play. I don't want him to quit, but also don't want him to resent a good thing. I think he should just play by himself. He'll play a lot more or find another teacher." That's, that's my advice. Because if I didn't have my wacky teacher, I might not have stuck with it. Because I, I had a teacher after who was a lot more normal and was trying to teach me how to uh, read music. And I, I, I lasted like a week. I was like, this is, this is not fun. Uh, Knox Bear. Just want to say hello and join the show as always. Thank you. Bear phone. Bear phone. Bear phone. Uh, Oh, what did Scott? Bear, um, Shoshana said on the chat that 65K is good. More is fine too. What, what does that mean? I don't know what that means. 65K is good. I don't know what that means. Uh, Knucklehead Bear says, Scary thought. Slam poetry battle between you, Nimmer, and Solomon. Oh, Solomon, it smoke us. For those of you that don't know, I'm sure there's like eight people total in the world who know. But we did a sh uh, I did a show in, um, in Buffalo and hung out with this slam poet guy, this little black dude with dreads, till like five in the morning. And uh, he was hilarious, but just really good at words. Like to a degree where I couldn't stop asking him questions. I should have him on the stream. He was He was cool. You know, you could make fun of shit. He wasn't like one of those dicks. He wasn't like a Black Lives Matter guy. Even if he was, I don't know if he's into that or not, but it wasn't like, it wasn't like one of those guys. It's like, when I look at the white page, I don't know where my black ink belongs. Like none of that shit. The dude is, is legit. I, I pimped out his Twitter before I lost my Twitter. The dude was classic. We hung out literally till five. He was talking about how different sounds of words like go together like music. I think he might have a hint of spectrum-y stuff. Which is, uh, which is amazing. All right, I'm going to uh, play you guys a little music and then I'm out. Please don't leave without checking PayPal. I won't. His anger enhances his mind and debate. Yeah. Oh, here we go. Johnson started the ball on removing the gold standard. Kennedy was against it. Hmm. Last silver coin was 1970. I'm telling you, dude, Johnson and Wilson were horrifying presidents. <sighs> It's just, what did they do? Johnson was such a dick. Let me just pop real into the app. Oh, you guys are apping out of control. There's networking bears in here. Liberty Snake Bear. Uh, Minuteman Bear. Kodiak Bear. Hi. 
and then I'm out. I just want to say hi. All right, I'm going to go. Let's do some. Uh, let's not forget FDR. He sucked too. Yeah, but he was wheelie, wheelie sad. All right, what do you guys want to hear? Let's do a little music before I go. I'm in, I'm in, the, uh, in the normal chat. I didn't get to yours yet, Jeremy. Jeremy, I'll do yours tomorrow because you wrote me a cool parody that I want to work on. I don't like sucking at stuff. Drop two nukes, how many presidents have? That's a good point. Uh, I'm so lost now, my stream is frozen for a while from Veteran Bear. It's all good. Uh, play some blues, golden brown. How does golden brown go? Go, 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 golden brown, texture like sun. It's a, is golden brown a similar thing to, um, to Sinner Man? Let's take a look. Oh, I forgot. I don't have a G. Uh, can someone in the app write a word with a G in it real quick so I can copy and paste it? Oh, going. Here we go. Going. Copy. Paste. All right. Golden brown. Thank you, guys. <laughs> I just need those Gs. So it's gold, golden brown. Text, text you like sun. Lay, lays, lays me down. How's that song go? Lays, go, golden, golden brown. Text you like sun. Wait, I can't get the fucking tone. Golden brown. Text you like sun. Golden brown. Text you like sun. Lays me down in my mind. She runs throughout the night. No need to fight. Never a frown with golden brown. Every time, just like the last. Oh, oh, cinnamon, where you gonna run to? Where you gonna run to? Golden brown. I can definitely do a mashup there somehow. I just don't want to waste your time. What else you guys want to hear? Golden Brown. A song about golden showers. Well, there's this one. It goes, uh, once, there, once there was a way to get back home. Uh, home. I don't know, that's not it. Once there was a way to get back home. Once there was a way to get back home. Once there was a way to get back home. Ah, I'm gonna look up the chords. It's such a good song. Oh, this might make Bad News Bear happy. This The cover by Ben Folds of this is amazing. Golden Slumbers. The Ben Folds cover of this song is better than the Beatles song. It's like unbelievable how Ben Folds cover, covers this. Once there was a, once, once there was a way Get back homeward. Once there was a way to get back home. Sleep, pretty darling, do not cry. And I will sing, I will sing you a lullaby. Go, golden shower. In your eyes. This song could be about um, what's her name, Chelsea Handler. But I don't like that where he sings that. To get back homeward. So if it's uh, 
You start here. Once there was a way to get back homeward. Once there was a way. that to get back to get back fuck hang on a second give me a second <sighs> so that's a okay so once it was away there with this one so it goes once there was a way to get back homeward once there was a way
All right, I'm going to close on the one I was working on. This is Amelie meets Kendrick Lamar. Kendrick Lamar, Mad City Lyrics. All right, this is... This is... Um, this was what he said a white girl wasn't allowed to sing on stage. When he brought her on stage to sing the song and she sang the lyrics and he got upset. So I'm going to show you that it can still be beautiful even with the words. And happy birthday again, Tracy. But the stress that's weighing on your brain Where you from? My nigga Fuck who you know Where you from? My nigga Where your grandma stay, huh? My nigga This mad city I run My nigga I'm a lay, yeah Pakistan on every porch is fine We adapt to crime Pack a van With four guns this time Where you at? My nigga Fuck who you know Where you from? My nigga Where your grandma stay, huh? My nigga This mad city I run My nigga Picking off you suckers, suck a dick, or die, or suck a punch. A wall from bullets coming from AKs, ARs, y'all duck. That's what mama said when we was eating the free lunch. Oh man, goddamn hell broke loose. Fuck your truce. Fuck your truce. My nigga, where your grandma stay? My nigga, this is my mad city I run, my nigga, where your grandma stay, huh, my nigga. If Prius and Crips all got along, they'd probably gun me down by the end of this song. Seems like the whole city go against me Every time I'm on the street I hear Yuck, yuck, yuck Yuck, yuck, yuck Yuck, yuck, yuck Yuck, yuck, yuck Wake your punk ass up It ain't nothing but a Compton thing Chia Real simple and plain I'ma teach you some lessons about the street It ain't nothing but a Compton thing How we do My nigga Where you from? My nigga Fuck who you know Where you from? My nigga 
Where the fuck your grandma stay, huh? My nigga This mad city I run My nigga I'ma lay, yeah, I'ma lay I'ma lay, my nigga Some heavy shit right there, man. You feel it from the, feel it from the streets. Feel it from the streets, yo. Yeet, yeet, yeet. Yawk, yawk, yawk. All right, guys. I gotta go. I did two uh, hour, uh, over two hours again, obviously. I just do that now, apparently. How do I get the new app? Must have missed it on Patreon. It's um, unbearablesapp.com, A-P-P. Unbearablesapp.com. We're working on a mobile version. But uh, that's all we got right now. What What is the piano piece you were just playing? That was Amelie. Please don't leave without checking PayPal. Uh, okay. His anger enhances my... All right. I, I did, though. I, 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 I addressed that already. I love you, bud. But uh, I can't do a whole thing right now. I was just doing some Kendrick. So uh, hit the like button. Share. Hugepianist.com. I, I know Bellevue is now sold out. So uh, Richland, Washington, Portland. We added a few more tickets, but that's about to sell out. And uh, specials, hugepianist.com slash specials for me, my two, and then Eric Nimmers. Uh, share this. Follow Owen Benjamin Clips. Uh, follow, I don't know. You guys know all this shit. I say this shit all the time. And, and much love to uh, Shoshana for having, uh, for, ha for coming on and giving me some advice about the book because that'll be coming out. And we seriously need to, uh, oh, at Owen Comedy on Twitter. I have no contact with it. I love the Delev in the in the description says staying between <laughs> between Owen and and uh and Twitter. All right, much love everybody. And UNN, go to unbearablenewsnetwork.com. That's just gonna keep growing. And I seriously had a great time today. I, I love doing these. And tomorrow's my birthday, so I'm gonna open packages and uh have fun. And then the and then the day after on the 25th, I head to Omaha to do uh, the unconvention with Ron Paul. And then, uh, yeah. And I'm going to be hitting a bunch of cities in October, too, and also Australia with Gavin McGinnis. Possibly with uh, Tommy Robinson, too. Tommy! I don't know, though. I, I'm not making that... I'm not saying that that's a fact. But that's what I was told, I think, possibly. He's like, I ain't no racist. Me best mate is Bubbles. Hello, Bubbles. Hello, Tommy. I fucking love those dudes. All right.